to other news now and our power crisis. Two statisticians at Wits University have produced a mathematical model they say proves that a future power grid powered by renewable energy would be cheaper than any other system. They say if we were to have a grid of which 85% of our power came from renewables by 2050, just 26, 27 years from now, that would be the cheapest way to produce electricity. If we were to have a grid powered by nuclear energy, it would be up to 60% more expensive. The two statisticians are Adam Balusik and Dr. David Roder, both from the Witt School of Statistics and Actuarial Science. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon to you, Adam. If I may just start with you, how did you work this out? What number are you actually looking at to come to this conclusion that renewable power would be cheaper? Thanks, Stephen, and thanks for having us on. Um, so I think, uh, so David and I have a background as actuaries, and so I suppose when undertaking this research, initially we aren't people with necessarily an energy background, we're not energy experts, and so what we wanted to aim to do was, from our actuarial background, essentially try and see, you know, what are the numbers telling us? Um, if we collect some data and we forecast these things forward, um, essentially what is our least cost of energy kind of looking like? So I'll hand over to David, who will take you through a little bit about how our model kind of works and what we're aiming to get to and how we got to these numbers. All right, so Dr. Roddick, yeah, so it, it, it's all about the cost per kilowatt hour, right? Why, why are renewables cheaper? Right, so we based our data off um, all the assumptions of costs per generation in the IRP 2019, including its 8.2% discount rate, which um, is important related to the cost of nuclear. Um, using a lower interest rate might make Lupia look much more attractive. Um, but basically, we base it off all the assumptions of the 2019 IRP, that's the government's plan, which went through a lot of public participation. And we also used data from the ESCOM data portal showing hourly generation for each of the technologies, showing the shape of the demand over the year with the morning and evening peaks. And um, so we could look at the accurate, up-to-date weather kind of capacity factors and efficiencies of the different plants and um, yeah, scaling up the, the demand and use it. we can then put in a simple Excel model different generations to see per hour how much demand would be there, how much generation would be there. And we, then you basically have to kind of color in the demand with um, your choices of energy, either renewables or gas or coal or nuclear, battery, pump storage, hydroelectric, dispatchable renewables, biomass. And um, so we first replicated what was done in the 2019 IRP and um, I just, I guess uh, in layman's terms, re renewables, wind and solar, it's variable. So at night, if the wind isn't shining, you need something to replace it. Uh, so we use gas, which is very expensive. It's maybe like six rand per kilowatt hour with current prices. But renewables are very cheap, 40 cents up to one rand per kilowatt hour for wind and solar, according to the recent market price we've been getting in the REI4P. Um, bids and if you mix the eight or seven, six rand of the gas with the less than one rand renewables, you get about a one rand overall average cost of energy in 2050 if we're using today's prices. And that's because using so much renewables in wind, um, solar is mainly in the middle of the day and wind has the least output in the middle of the day, so they complement each other nicely. And then there's 5% of the energy needs in a year would need to be filled in by the, the gas. So an overall cost comes to about one rand for the least cost mix, which was interesting for us to find out as non-energy experts. Okay. Um, so, Adam, this idea that with renewables, the sun is not always on, the wind is not always blowing, but don't tell anyone from Kovacha that. Um, you do then, as I understand it, if you want to have go kilowatt for kilowatt or megawatt for megawatt rather, um, from solar power to coal, you need three times as much solar power. I'm not sure what the same figure is for wind. So do you, have you included the element of excess, the excess capacity that you need in your model? Mm, absolutely. So um, uh, I'll, I'll hand over to David shortly, um, but on that essentially, our model does uh, look at these items. So what we've sort of tried to include in our model is the ability to perform sensitivity analysis, so essentially able to change the availability of things like wind and solar power um, as these may change in the future, um, and to essentially assess the effect that that is going to have on your final cost mix. Um, and so, and David, if you want to comment on the sort of uh, changing in assumptions around yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. So, um, Basically, if I've installed four kilowatt hours of solar in my house, as I have done, 
Um, the sun is only shining a certain point of the day, so at midday it will produce four hours, but over the 24 hours it won't produce four times 24, it will produce about four times five hours of kilowatt hours of energy, so that's a capacity factor of about 20%. And um, recent ESCOM data suggests 4,000, just as a good example to understand this coal to solar mix, is about more than 4,000 ESCOM estimates that there's more than 4,000 megawatts of 4,000 megawatts of solar rooftop PV installed this year. Uh, but that doesn't equate to four stages of load shedding. You've got to times that by about 20 to 24 percent. So that's probably saved us about one stage of load shedding. But um, our cost per kilowatt hour is not cost per kilowatt installed, it's cost per kilowatt hour generated. So even though you're installing four times as much um, kilowatts as the coal to produce the same amount of energy, the cost per kilowatt hour that you actually get out of it ends up being about 50 cents to a rand compared to coals, which was for renewable would be significantly higher than that. Okay. So the price is one thing. Um, and possibly the most important thing, but not necessarily. Adam, maybe let me put this question to you. Would it be wise to have 85% of our power coming from renewable sources? In other words, if there's no wind or if it's cloudy or if you have a, I don't know, snow in Gauteng, wouldn't you actually leave yourself quite vulnerable? And I realize what you say about nuclear being more expensive. And the other problem with nuclear, of course, is that you need to pay most of the cost of it up front. But it is very reliable. It's always on all the time. They use Kubrick to balance the grid. Absolutely. And I think that's also been something that's been very interesting as in, in going through this research is I think as South Africans, everyone has their two cents that they throw in at a bry around what they believe, how we can solve load shedding. But in going through this research, I think what David and I have realized is just how complex of an issue it is. Um, around the idea that we can't only consider cost, so it's around how does South Africa diversify its energy mix um, in terms of how do we offset cost against the idea that we also have to decarbonize our energy sector, that we have to look to renewable energy, what is the most efficient way of doing that, how can we afford what's going to be the cheapest. Um, so in terms of focusing on that sort of renewable energy, I think one of the, the main sort of uh, cons against it is that it is variable, which means that if the sun doesn't shine or there is no wind, then how do you still provide power? Or what happens in the in-betweens between when the sun is shining and when the wind is blowing? And on those, then you almost need um, uh, dispatchable energy. So things that can ramp up very quickly. So in the idea of sort of um, an ability to store energy that you can then use at a later date. So when the sun is shining and we are producing more than sufficient energy, how can we store it so that we can then later use it? So some forms of that being hydro storage, uh, battery storage, and then also another form being that you can use gas um, to sort of meet the, the interim needs. And so, David, if you want to chat on how those sort of were incorporated into our model. Yeah, no, that's good. I'll just add one more point in that if you look at the actual data, um, using the when the wind didn't blow and when the sun didn't shine in 2022, and you assume you have the same weather in 2050, same amount of time when, yes, that's the, you get times in midnight when the wind doesn't blow. And in that case, you needed to power your whole grid by gas, basically, or batteries, or combined with, um, and so you need a lot of gas to be available. All right. the, the whole energy mix. So, uh, yeah. We'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Thank you very much indeed. Interesting to look at the numbers on all of this. Adam Belazic and Dr. David Rodder, both from the Witt School of Statistics and Actuarial Science. Gentlemen, I really appreciate the time. Thank you very much indeed. In